In this section, we're going to introduce probability. So first we have what we call an experiment, which is just any process of observation that has an uncertain outcome. And our experimental, out, experimental outcomes are just all the possible outcomes. And the sample space is a set of all the possible outcomes. So for example, if what would be the sample space if we toss a coin once? So if I toss a coin once, I can either get heads or tails. And we'll abbreviate this with just an H and a T, just so we don't have to write as much. But to write the sample space, we'll always write S equals, and then we do curly brackets with the possible outcomes inside. Then if I wanted to know something like what is the sample space if I toss a coin twice, we can draw a tree diagram. So for the tree diagram, first I say, okay, well I can either get heads or tails on the first toss. And then on the second toss, if I got heads first, I could still get heads or tails. And on the second toss, if I got tails first, I could still get heads or tails on the second toss. So then you follow along the tree branches, so you say, okay, heads and heads gives me HH. Heads and tails gives me heads, tails. Tails and then heads, tails, heads, tails and then tails, tails, tails. Now, if we were to toss a coin three times, but we are only interested in the number of heads, what would the sample space be? So I don't actually care what the specific outcomes were, I only care about the number of heads. So I could get zero heads, one, two, or three heads. If we wanted to count the number of people who shop at Lee's Marketplace this weekend, and we want to know the sample space, we could have zero people, or one person, or two people, or three, or four, and there really isn't a theoretical upper limit here, and so we'll just have a dot, dot, dot. Now how could we find probabilities? Some probabilities can be found using logic, which is what we do a lot of in this class. One method is the classical method, which is an example like this of what would be the probability of tossing a head on a fair coin? Well, on a fair coin, it's either heads or tails, and they're equally likely. So your probability of heads would either be 50% or 0.5 or 1 half. In this class, you can write all of your probabilities as percentages, decimals, or fractions. It really doesn't matter. Or if you want the probability of rolling a 6 on a fair side of 6 die, you can say, okay, there are six options, but only one that I'm interested in, so the probability would be one out of six. That's what we mean by the classical method. You say, how many am I interested in? One. How many total options are there? Six. So one out of six. You could find the probability by conducting an experiment many times. A common way to think about probability is a long-run frequency. So for example, we could toss a coin a hundred times, a thousand, a million times, and find the fraction or the relative frequency of heads. So we can think of the probability as the percentage of times our outcome would occur in many repetitions of the experiment. And lastly, we could use experience, our intuitive judgment, our expertise to come up with a probability. This would be a subjective probability and it's obviously going to be not necessarily accurate. We're only going to use this if there's no logic to determine a probability and we can't perform an experiment many times. So like, how would you find the probability that John prefers a cheeseburger to a sandwich? Okay. That's not something that we can find with logic, and we probably can't make him eat a thousand, or make him choose a thousand times to keep track of which one he chooses. Or, I might guess that you have a 95% chance of passing this class. This isn't going to be very accurate for you necessarily, because I'm just guessing based on past history. I could interpret this maybe as the long run, in the long run, 950 out of 1,000 students will pass my classes. That's our long-term relative frequency. Or I could try to interpret it as your personal one-time likelihood of passing the class. But obviously, that's not going to be incredibly accurate for you because I don't know the information about you. Or a CEO might need to estimate the probability that a new product will be successful. Obviously, he can't introduce the product 10,000 times for to find the long-term relative frequency and there isn't a mathematical formula. So he would make the best guess he can based on previous experiment, market research, etc. Now if you have equally likely outcomes, things like rolling a fair die or a fair coin, if there are n equally likely outcomes in the sample space, then the probability of each outcome is 1 out of n. So like the probability of heads, there are two possibilities on a coin, so the probability of heads is one out of two. We do have a few rules. 
So let's start off with, we have our sample space S, and we'll call it out, our outcomes 01, 02, etc. And we can assign each possible outcome a probability. So we'll say like the probability of our outcome equals some probability. Or probability of heads equals one half. So we'll have a set of little probabilities, P1, P2, etc. And our assigned probabilities have to follow two rules. Every probability has to be a number between 0 and 1. And your probabilities must add up to 1. So in example 5, we have at a certain company, machine breakdowns occur with the following probabilities. Electrical probability is 0.2, probability of mechanical is 0.5, and probability of misuse is 0.3. So we want to know if this is a valid probability assignment. That means we need to check and make sure it follows the two rules. So first you check, are all those probabilities between 0 and 1? So 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0.3, yes. Then you add up all the probabilities, and we got 1. So yes, this is good. Now how many of the next six breakdowns will be caused by mechanical probabilities? Well, mechanical is 0.5, so that means like half of them. So half of 6 would be 3. Now it's not going to be exactly 3. We can't guarantee exactly 3. But in the long run, about three out of every six breakdowns will be mechanical because the probability of mechanical is 0.5. Now let's say we decide to toss a fair coin. What is the sample space and probabilities for each outcome? So our outcomes are heads and tails. Each probability is one half because they're equally likely. Now, for example, 7, I actually have a bias point. I know that the probability of heads is 0.3. What is the probability of tails? So to find that, we say, okay, the probability of heads equals 0.3. So how do you find the probability of tails? Well, you remember that everything has to add up to 1. So 0.3 plus something equals 1. Or 1 minus 0.3 gives me 0.7, so we get probability of tails as 